Hi, I'm Colton Paul, the sophomore at NYU Shanghai, and this is my bag of words approach to Chinese text difficulty for Professor Keith Ross's machine learning class. So what's the goal of the project? In short, given a collection of Chinese texts, of which we have a general idea of their difficulty level, to try to learn which features contribute to that difficulty. Then we're going to use machine learning algorithms to try to predict the difficulty of a new Chinese text based on the aforementioned training collection. Though ultimately, more refined categories would be nicer, for this project, I'm only going to sort them into three categories, elementary, intermediate, and advanced. But an important question here is, why bother? Almost everyone has or is trying to learn a new language, and new apps like Duolingo, Babbel, or Rosetta Stone are useful for learning to speak and write simple sentences but as a language learner, I found finding practice readings to improve reading comprehension very challenging. They're either too difficult or too easy. And especially for beginners, easy books tend to be so short that it's hard to continue to supply the demand for new readings. Instead, if you could take collections of new texts, newspapers, etc., and have them labeled by difficulty for you, it would be much easier to meet this demand. All right, so hopping right into it, let's take a look at this collection that I've mentioned a couple times. This was actually the hardest part of the project for me because labeled difficulty data doesn't quite exist. In other words, there are no explicitly labeled texts made to serve as this kind of data. The closest I found, and what I ended up doing, was using introductory Chinese textbooks for elementary, second grade Chinese exams, for actual students in China that is, for intermediate, and seventh grade Chinese reading books for advanced. So what do I do with the data? For this project, I'm testing the efficacy of a simple bag of words approach, which takes all of these sentences and turns them into, well, bags of words, ignoring grammar and word order. I'll then look for features based solely on the words and sentence links. But, as per usual, there's a catch. Tokenization, splitting the words, is easy in many languages like English, and actually a big issue in Chinese and Arabic, where all the characters are run together. There are no spaces in between them. So the first step is to segment the words. There are a handful of packages to accomplish this, but none of them are perfect, which will contribute to some error later on. The two most popular ones I tried were the Stanford Word Segmenter and Jieba. After harassing some of my Chinese friends to check out the results, I decided to go with the, la with the latter package. So just as a very brief idea of how it works, Jieba takes a string of Chinese characters and breaks it into every possible combination of words. It then weighs the probability of every option and chooses the most probable. For example, here we have two poorly written sentences, and we separate them such that both contain completely legitimate words. But based on word frequency lists, it's more likely to have the second option than the first, so Jieba chooses that one. So choosing this package also seems to be very in the spirit of my project, because as you can see, this is also a kind of bag of word approach to tokenization. Now with these bags of words, the most telling features that I could find in regard to their difficulty were the following. Average HSK value of all the words in the passage. HSK referring to the official Chinese test for Chinese fluency. So the HSK value would be based on how advanced the test thinks these words are. Next, average sentence length and characters. Then average number of grammatical particles based on collection, uh, collections compiled from various lists of Chinese grammar words. And lastly, the highest H HSK value found in the passage. 
So we have labeled data points that we can use to train an algorithm to separate these data. But first, I want to see if there are any clear patterns in the data already, if they seem to be naturally separated, so to speak. So I used k-means, an algorithm that ignores labels, to get a better feel for the data. And here are the results. Uh, graphed in three dimensions, uh, so it necessarily had to ignore one of the features. I think um, number of chromatical particles was ignored so that it could be graphed. But already you see some clear separation among some of the data, particularly between elementary and intermediate and advanced. But intermediate and advanced are still kind of lumped together. So hopefully this will make it easier to imagine uh, what some error might look like when doing a supervised classification algorithm, which we do now. Because of its widespread success in similar problems, I decided to go for multi-class support vector machines to classify the points, using a few different kernels to see what works. Because of the relatively small sample size, I used cross-validation to test the algorithm and took the average results of 30 trials. So after adjusting the parameters, the best results for linear and polynomial kernels are shown here, with the linear SVM getting almost a 3 fourths success rate and the polynomial kernel taking it to the next step and barely breaking that barrier. I also played around with the RBF, radial basis function kernel, and I think actually did get better results than the ones shown here at some point, but it never surpassed the other kernels. In the end, a 75% success rate is okay, compared to the 33% rate of just guessing. But as we could see with the k-means plots, it's really failing on separating the intermediate and advanced texts. So how can we crank this thing up a bit? What kind of improvements can we look for? First, we really need to expand the data set. It turns out that 60 data points really just isn't enough. Secondly, the HSK features seem to be a little lacking. There are only seven classifications for HSK, and they don't necessarily cover every word in the dictionary. So in the future, I'll try to use things more along the lines of frequency lists or more standard approaches to try to have better results for finding the difficulty of individual words. And lastly, and this is kind of the ultimate conclusion of the project, uh, should have made it bigger, it seems that bag of words simply doesn't cut it. We need to use features that give more insight into the grammar and complexity of the passage. So this would entail trying to, for instance, employ some things being done in natural language processing uh, or other hot fields to look for better, more interesting features. So that's the next step. Thank you for watching, and thanks to my classmates, Professor Ross and Nishant, for a great year.